Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use different types of documents to display your lessons in the classroom. I have found that there are four main types of platforms that people use to display their lessons. I see PowerPoint, PDF, Google Slides, and then web-based lessons or curriculum. So this video, I'm going to focus on just two. PowerPoint and PDF because they are both uploaded the same way and they are both used in the same way in the classroom. But there are some major differences between the two and how the student and you interact with the lessons. So I wanted to focus on those two today. So first of all, you need to upload the lessons into your drive on class in. So I'm going to show you how and where to do that. So you're going to take a look on the left side you're going to find your drive. Your drive is where all of your documents are stored. So you can easily open them in your classroom. You always want to upload them into your drive first. So what I do is I just open my drive. I open my file on my computer where the document is stored and then I just drag it into the drive and drop it and then it uploads. Over here on the bottom right, you can see what file types it supports. So you can see it does support PowerPoint and PDF. And I like to make files. And I'll show you once we get into the classroom how that helps me. So for this example, I'm going to be using Justin. So you can see here I've already uploaded the PowerPoint. And then I also uploaded the same lesson as a PDF. So I can show you the same lesson in both types. I personally use PowerPoint and I'll show you why once we take a look at it in the classroom. It does take sometimes a few minutes for them to upload because of the file size. So when you do that, always do it well before the class. You don't want to do it right before class and then enter the classroom and it's still trying to upload. So always have those prepared ahead of time. So now once your files are in your drive, you're now able to use it in your classroom. So I'm going to use the practice room, which is down here if you don't know. It's called the Blackboard Editor. I just call it the practice room because you can use it just like you can a classroom, except without the student. So I'm going to open my Blackboard Editor and I can see my classroom. Over here on the right, I'm going to find my drive, the little cloud. You're first going to see your list of files. And then I'm going to find Justin. That's the one I want to use. So let me pull up my PowerPoint first. So I found my PowerPoint and now I can open it. So there are a couple ways you can display it in the classroom. If you want to use full screen, that way it's large and you and the student can stay at the top. I prefer to have me and the student larger in the class so I can see the student and the student can see me, but that's all preference on how you want to organize it. So how I do it is I use my window layouts. And if you don't know how to do window layouts, I have another video for that. I have my window layout that I use in class. So I put my PowerPoint over here. I put me and the student over to the right so we can see the PowerPoint on the left. So take a look at this PowerPoint. The important things that you need to know is how to find any notes that you use, how to switch between different slides if you need to switch slides, and of course, how to progress the lesson. So at the bottom, you're going to see our left, right arrows and a little play symbol. Use the play symbol if you have those animations that you want to use. So I like to use animations where I make like a word fade in or pick picture fade in or fade out. So when I click the little play button, it makes my animations go through. So here's my animation, the curtain opening, and my next slide is there. You can also use the right arrow. Sometimes the right arrow skips the animations. So I don't use the right arrow, I only use the play button. Either one should work, but sometimes the right arrow will just skip to the next slide and skip any animations that you have. As you see, actually, there you go. You're just doing it right now. So if you don't have animations, you can just use that right arrow. Or if you want to skip something that you're taking too long on and you don't want the student to see that you're skipping it, you can just use that right arrow. If you have those animations, always use that middle play button. 
A while back, I was having issues with the animations working correctly, but since the last update for class in, I haven't had any issues with animations as long as I'm using that middle play button. No problem since then. So that's important to know when you're using the PowerPoint. The other thing that I find useful are these two buttons over here on the bottom left. So the first one is a list shows you all of your slides. So let's say you're getting close to end of class and you still have a couple slides left and you want to skip to the end. I could pull this up and I could skip on, click on the goodbye slide that I make. The student cannot see this on their screen. Only the teacher can see it. So I can double click, maybe, there you go. And now I'm on my goodbye slide. The other helpful button is this button right here. This is your notes. So when I'm making my PowerPoints, I sometimes will put notes for a slide as a reminder to myself, like if there's some type of extension question I want to ask. I don't like to write a lot of words on my slides. I think that's just too much, too busy for the student. They don't need to see every question written out. So I like to put my notes down here. Let's see if I have any. I know I have some in my beginning slides. So let me pull those up. Here we go. So you could see, introduce word and definition, what people, things, days are special to you. So if I need that reminder, I can look down at my notes. Again, the student cannot see the notes on you, the screen, on their screen. Only the teacher can see them. And as I go through, I can just keep those notes up and they change as I go through each slide. So I love the ability to have those notes in case I'm like, oh, I know I had something, a great idea for this slide. I can look at my notes to see what that great idea was. Okay, so there's the PowerPoint. Oh, another thing with the PowerPoint, writing on it. So you and the student can write on the PowerPoint, okay? I use this a lot for like underlining if I'm looking at certain sounds or pointing out a certain letter or something in the picture, I like to circle or underline, or I might have the student circle or underline. When you change the slide, so let's say I go to the next slide, and like, oh, I need to go back, all your writing disappears. So that is important to keep in mind. You can't go back and add to your writing or see the writing that you had. Everything disappears. Okay, so that's the basics for PowerPoint. So now let's take a look at the PDF. So I can use the same exact lesson and I can create it as a PDF. So let me pull up, same place. I have my PDF version right here. I have noticed that the PDF takes longer to load, which is weird because it's actually a smaller file size than my PowerPoint. So I'll pull it up and this, the slides work the same except you're scrolling down rather than going to the right. So I can scroll down and I can see on my slides. I can also use the arrows at the bottom to skip to the next slide. Do, do, do. So it's similar to a PowerPoint, but obviously with PDF, you don't have animations. So all your animations are gone. Some people don't like animations, don't care about animations. If you don't care about animations, then you might just want to use PDF. The good thing about PDF is the writing. So again, let's say, I'm writing here. So let's say we were talking about this and my mom is important to me. And then you go to the next slide and then you forgot something, the writing stays. So you don't have to worry about the writing disappearing. You can continue and then you can go back and review something that you already talked about. PowerPoint, all your writing disappears. PDF, it stays the same. All right, at the bottom, you can see the page numbers. And over here, you have similar to the PowerPoint, you can scroll through and skip to another slide. These actually click a lot easier than the PowerPoint. I could just click once, where the PowerPoint I had to like double click and then go out of it. So I can skip to the end if I need to. Since it's not a PowerPoint, you won't have the notes. So those will not be there for you, only being able to skip to different slides. So. Now you can see the difference between the two and which one is best for you. Again, if you like animations like I do, you're going to have to use PowerPoint. If you don't use animations, you might just want to skip or stick with 
PDF. One other thing I wanted to mention that a lot of people ask questions about are videos. So obviously you can't play a video in a PDF, but there is a way to embed a video like a YouTube video into a PowerPoint. Those do not work correctly on Class In. So if you have a video embedded in your PowerPoint and try to play it, it's not going to work. So the workaround that I use since I do play YouTube videos for my students, especially my younger students, is to download the video separately from your PowerPoint, upload it into the class and drive, and then play it for the student. I am not sure if I have any videos. Let me see if I have one. Oh, here we go. So here's the happy birthday song, the singing walrus. So even though I have a lesson here, my PowerPoint lesson, when I want to play the video, which I usually do at the beginning of class anyway, I would open my video for the student to watch. That way the student can see the video and you can see the video. It works perfectly this way. So that is something to keep in mind as well if you like to show videos in your classroom. So hopefully that answers any questions that you have about using PDF and PowerPoint. My next video, even though I don't use Google Slides very often and I don't use the web-based um, lessons, at least right now, I can show you how to use those in the classroom because I know a lot of people have questions about that as well. So hopefully this answered all of your questions. Happy teaching. Bye-bye.